Shalom, shalom, fam. It's Aki Netanya, uh, better known as Indie Beats on Facebook for most of y'all that know me on there. And uh, this is my testimony um, on how I came into this truth. First, I want to break down my name because I know I get that all the time. A lot of people ask me how did I get the name Netanya, and uh, it's fairly simple. I kind of, I'll try to cut the story down a little bit. Um, Nathan Yah is similar to my birth name. My birth name was uh, Nathan. And my mom decided to name me that because she said it was out of the Bible. And uh, back then we wasn't in the truth. Uh, I actually wasn't even in the church at all. So uh, she told me it came out of the Bible and it meant a gift from God. I mean, that's all I knew until uh, I got older. Uh, when I stumbled upon this truth, and I started to do research on the actual name itself, uh, which is short for Nathaniel or Nathan, Nathan Yah, uh, the Hebrew version that is a gift from Yah. And uh, it's funny that she would name me that because um, throughout my childhood and my adulthood, I've been blessed by Yah and I have multiple different talents. Like I can sing. Uh, I can draw, I used to dance when I was in the singing group. Um, pretty much technically, I wouldn't be able to do it without. I mean, if it wasn't for Yah, it'd be impossible for me to have those skill sets. So the name Nathan, or what is short for Nathan, Nathaniel, or Nathan, Nathan Yah, was, uh, was profound because it fit me perfectly. Uh, but when I came into the truth, it's a little bit different now. I feel as though that the name uh, Nathan or Nathan Yah is uh, is is not conducive of, conducive of what I do now. Um, the name isn't conducive of what I do now. I uh, feel as though that Yah has blessed me my whole life with these talents and for the longest time I was using those talents to try to escape the curses and um, like anybody would out of the hood you just want to use whatever talents you got to get you and your family out the hood and um, that's what I was trying to do so uh, the name Natan actually suited me a little bit better I was going through a, a, a Hebrew book it's, uh, I actually seen it I think it was in the curses documentary or Bible versus Christianity, but it's a Bible, uh, I mean, it's a book called Your Name is Your Blessing, and it has a whole bunch of Hebraic names and their definitions, and I saw Natan right under Nathan, and Natan uh, meant he gave, so I figured if I put Yah on the end of that, it would be he gave to Yah, and I feel as though that is my purpose now, because Yah has given me these gifts all my life and I've been using them for all aspects and not really using it for y'all so now I feel as though it's my time to finally give back and use my talents that he's blessed me with to help others in this walk and this truth and to spread his word so I chose to use Nathan Yah uh, mainly because I feel as though I'm using my skill set now to give back to y'all so it's he gave to y'all so that's what my name is Nathan Yah um, but that was just a little bit of history on that. Uh, most people that know Indy, uh, Indy is just a producer name I had when I was in the industry. Uh, it's nothing pagan, it's just something that I made up and it stuck. And I guess it's easy for a lot of people to remember, it, remember me as Indy, mainly because it's a unique name and you don't really hear too many people with that name. So, Nathan, yeah, Indy, it's the same person. Uh, I'll start introducing myself as both. Uh, so y'all know exactly who I am if I get a chance to meet any of the Ox or Coaches in person. Um, so, uh, where do I start? Uh, this truth, um, I really wasn't into it. I'm going to be honest with you. Uh, I've never was in the church. I never read anything from scripture. Uh, I really wasn't a religious or spiritual person. I was always trying to base things on factual information that I can prove. And to me, reading scripture always seemed like a fairy tale or just some outlandish story that I didn't really fit into because the way the media and, and kind of like the movies all paint the picture 
of what the Bible is supposed to look like. And it's not really historically accurate in none of the movies, so I, I just stood away from it. Just I, I seen church and I seen all these other religions, and it just seemed so extreme. <laughs> and uh, I, I, I just didn't want to have anything to do with it, so I decided to just do my own thing with my music. And I was working with regular labels. I had a manager uh, working with different local artists back in Philly. Uh, by the way, yeah, uh, uh, neglected to mention that I definitely represent D1 Philly. Uh, but yeah, uh, I was using my talents as, as best as I could because at the time, uh, I pretty much thought that these talents would be a way out of the hood. I mean, that's all we knew. I mean, we understood we were struggling. So we were trying to do whatever we could to kind of get out of these curses these entanglements like the, the street life so you wouldn't get killed by the time you turn like 21 so i'm like well i can sing i can draw i can do all of these talents let me see if i can utilize these talents and make a career out of it so that's what i was focused on uh but i guess that wasn't y'all's plan for me uh because there was a lot of pitfalls i ran into and it wasn't because i lacked the skill set it was mainly because it, it just seemed like Yah was really trying to steer me away from, I guess, the industry and how how good it is at it, like consuming people as a whole. So uh, it was just it was just hurdle after hurdle after hurdle, setback after setback after setback, and it just started getting real, real like frustrating. So I was just like, okay, okay. I went to the Navy uh, with my brother, and because at the time I was like 24, 25 years old, and I was like, hey, music ain't really doing nothing. Let's do this. The, the Navy didn't really work out, so I, came, I actually left without uh, even uh, doing it the proper way. I just I got fed up one day, packed my stuff up, and just was out. Um, got back to uh, Chicago. And I was in Chicago after I left the Navy. Uh, actually, I was living in Norfolk for a little bit. It wasn't really working too well down there in uh, Virginia, so I decided to move up to Chicago uh, with a friend of mine that I did music with. You know, uh, lucky, enough, uh, lucky enough for me, uh, my brother was going through some things that Yah was setting him apart. Uh, he goes by the name of Enoch. Uh, now, that's his Hebrew name. And uh, he definitely was a blessing uh, when it came to this truth because when he was studying and he was online like everybody else is searching Illuminati and searching all this other stuff and it seems like that road always leads you to this truth and uh, we was looking at the industry exposed and seeing how wicked the industry is with the satanic rituals and I was like man I don't, if I do music I want to do it for the love of music not that purpose because I, I love my craft and a lot of times I would do music just for free just because and he would always give me this information about the scriptures and how we use uh, Hebrew Israelites and uh, he was giving me the site uh, HebrewIsraelites.com I mean .org uh, he gave me the uh, website HebrewIsraelites.org and uh I went on there, and uh, at the time, I really wasn't taking it too serious. It was like 2007, 2008, and uh, it's funny because he had watched this uh, this documentary called uh, Hebrew So-Called Negroes. That was like the first documentary he ever got the opportunity to look at about this truth, and he was telling me, like, yeah, man, you, you have Chicago, man, you should, uh, Go uh, check out the, uh, the, the guy Obadiah Israel because he up there and he has some Israelites and he speaking his truth. And at the time, I'm like, I'm not really into this truth at all. I don't really know this dude Obadiah. Like, and it's funny because back in like uh, 2007, 2008, it wasn't no uh, IHRFCs. So I just kind of felt awkward if I was just going to be in Chicago, just knock on somebody's door, like, yeah, I'm here trying to figure out uh, this Israelite stuff. So I was like, nah, I didn't want to take that route. Uh, things didn't happen too well up Chicago. I came back to Philly, and that's when I really, really started digging knee deep into this truth, man. It was just, it was just something that I found that this is my purpose. I mean, uh, 
I, I was looking at it. None of the information that I looked at was irrefutable. Especially, what blew my mind was the fact that the letter J didn't exist until the late 1600s. So it made the name Jesus irrelevant in in a early Hebrew history. So that was like uh, like mind boggling. I was like, wow. And then to to read Deuteronomy 28. And, and see that it pretty much mapped out exactly what's happening to our people, uh, these curses, and read through the scriptures telling us that we'd be in, uh, taken back into slavery upon ships. Like, that ain't happened to no other people but us. And it was just like more and more the puzzle pieces start getting together. And I was just like looking at it from an Israelite perspective versus a Gentile perspective like the, the media and, and the movie industry painted and it was just it was just profound. I just I just had to I had to sit back and just look at the information. I was just blown away. I was like, wow, like this is serious. Like this is not what I thought it was gonna be. I really thought it was just gonna be like some other religious group or some like extremist group and they were just trying to fight for black power and it was just like it's more than that. It was about our history, our heritage, our culture, and, and this was just information that we lost due to our ancestors just being disobedient and going against Yah's laws and his commandments, and it, it, it was just something that at first, when, when I first, first, like, this, when this information first sunk in, it was just like, I was angry at first. I was like, man, I can't believe after all these years, like, we've been just force-fed lies. Church, and uh, TV, and, and history being rewritten, and we're looking at television, and looking at Cleopatra, and Moses, and it's like, historically inaccurate, and it was just like, wow, man. Uh, it was a lot to take in at once, because uh, it was just like, you, you go through life, thinking everything's one way and then it's like okay it's a pit stop then there's a fork in a row and then the fork in a row leads to two lies and then this truth goes right through the middle and you've never seen it there before until you sat, sat there and looked at this information I was just like alright this is more important than anything else I could be possibly working on right now uh, any any movie type of deals, any type of music industry stuff, and I had to really sit down and uh, make a decision on what I really wanted to do. And at the time, it was really hard because I was knee deep in the music industry. I was working with record labels, with my manager. I was working with local artists. I was doing photo shoots with people, and uh, it was hard letting those people go focus on his truth because uh, scripture tells us we can't serve two masters so at first I thought well maybe what I'll do is I'll get signed I'll get in the industry I'll get enough money to kind of help IH out and help anybody with this truth and be able to financially support a lot of venues and things like that and then I'll be able to focus on while I'm in the industry uh spreading this truth to a lot of industry artists because they, I mean, scripture says any, everybody should know this truth or at least had an opportunity to accept this truth. So I thought that that was going to be the route, but the more and more I tried to get closer and closer to the industry, the more and more I was showing me like, no, no, this is not why I bless you with these talents. I uh, gave you these talents to spread my truth, not for you to get rich off of and not for you to exploit via the industry so it, it was a hard decision i had to burn a lot of bridges a lot of my friends to this day still don't understand the significance and the importance of this truth and the truth is going to be a division sometimes it's, it's because a lot of people are stuck on lies lies i serve as a comfort zone for a lot of people and uh for you to tell somebody that their whole life was a lie it's devastating. I mean, I had to absorb it for myself, and I had to be strong enough to get, all right, let's forget everything I used to know, and uh, let's start learning 
like a baby again and figure out what this world is really about. And then uh, finding out the Father's name and Yah is Yah. And uh, Psalm 64 was another thing that just blew me away because it's like you grew up your whole life saying God, this, Lord, that. Not even considering like those aren't even names, they're just titles. Like if you were to call somebody doctor, or if you were to call somebody general, or if you were to call somebody mister or father. So it was just to know that Yah actually gave us a physical name for us to call him was just like, it made it personal. You know? It's not like, like I don't know, it's like, okay, I know his name now. So it's like, when you know somebody's name, you feel a better, you, you get to build a better rapport versus if you walk up to somebody and you're calling them sir the whole time, you really feel a disconnect there. So it's kind of like when you're calling the most high God, you feel that disconnect because it's like, okay, like there's like all these other guys, like how do I know that he's hearing me if it's a Buddhist guide and it's a Muslim guide and, and, and all these other different guides and it was just, it, it didn't feel sincere, it didn't feel authentic and then to know that the Father's name is Yah, it was just like, wow, I know his name. So it was like, if I pray to Yah, I know that he's going to hear me versus if I pray to God, like who's going to really hear me? I mean, who's really getting that energy? A lot of Christians don't know. Uh, kumbaya, which is come by here, yeah, or come by yeah, because our slave ancestors knew they were Israelites. So it was praying to Yah to bring them out of bondage. They knew what they did was wrong, so they prayed to Yah. Uh, so it, it was definitely profound in knowing that the Messiah's name is not Jesus, it's Yahushua, which is Yah's salvation, makes perfect sense because he break names has specific meanings for that person. So uh, it, it was a lot to take in. And then once I, I started really, really digging in and studying, and uh, my brother was a lot of help because he uh, definitely was, uh, he had a head start on the truth. So he was able to answer a lot of questions for me before I started even fellowshipping with IH, before I even started going power talk and listening to the radio. Uh, shows and even trying to even fellowship with anybody that was considered to be an Israelite. So, uh, it, it, uh, like, like Enoch, he definitely helped my walk out a lot. Like, I don't think my walk would be where it was at if it wasn't for him because it was kind of like he was that that crutch that I could utilize until I could stand on my own two feet on this walk. So uh, now it's kind of like we just tag team. So. Uh, yeah, but now it's just it's really, really something to be proud of, man. It's just like, I know my heritage now, man. It's like, I feel, I get excited to tell people about this truth because it's like their history. This is something you never knew. Like, I just I just look at how many of our people died and never had the opportunity of uh, getting to know this truth. So, man, I, I started studying in 08, 2008, really, really digging into it. And uh, I really don't consider that time as me being in this walk because it was kind of like my my curiosity state. It was like I was dipping in this and trying to dip back into the industry, dipping in this and trying to go back to something else. So I finally decided to dedicate my life to Yah and make this official so I got immersed in uh, 2011. And from 2011 is where I consider my, my footprint on my walk and uh, it was 6 24 2011 was the, the date that I actually got immersed and uh man I tell you ever since then man like Hashi Tan be, been shooting shots at me because this is definitely not an easy walk uh I tell that to everybody because we have to endure to the end I mean, anything we're fighting for is not gonna be easy uh so now what I do is uh this this walk is totally changed my life. I, I didn't you know, that uh, they don't get a chance to even breathe. So to hear something refreshing from somebody like this truth is, is definitely something that uh, I want to be able to be there for people when, when they're ready to hear this truth. So that's why I keep my Facebook page uh, open and I always post stuff because you never know who's reading it. Uh, but it's definitely changed my life. Uh, it's making me a better person. It's still a lot of things that I gotta kill uh, in an old version of me that uh, like we always do. I mean, working toward perfection. And it's, it's a list. 
uh, I'm starting to check that list off, kind of like the shirt, just Xing off all the, uh, the old byword and proverbs, and uh, it, it, it's definitely a challenge and, and it's definitely a blessing to see other people doing the same thing you doing, so you know you're not doing it alone, and you get the fellowship and do testimonies like this, and it give your perspective on how this walked and changed your life. So now I utilize whatever I can with the way Yah has blessed me, and I, I utilize it for His walk. Uh, I created the uh, Yah's tube YouTube video uh, page, uh, which are looking at this uh, video on Yah's tube now, probably, or if somebody uploaded it to another page. Hallelujah! Hey, the testimony is a testimony, and then hopefully it's a blessing no matter where it's at on uh, YouTube. But uh. It's a youtube.com uh, forward slash Yaz tube. And I'm utilizing my photography and videography and editing skills to pretty much upload whatever work we do for Yah. Uh, I just want to document it so people can go there and see, wow, this, this, is what a, this is what a man of Yah does. This is what a woman of Yah does. This is the work that they're doing. This is the real stuff, not what the media is trying to create. Uh, this is what they're really putting their hands into. Uh, so I'm helping a lot of people with their music. Uh, Set Apart Music is something that we, uh, we as an organization at uh, Israelite Heritage and Coin. I mean, I just helped design the logo. I didn't really come up with the name. I know they was calling it Set Apart Music. I just decided to call it Sam one day. Power Talk, and then it kind of stuck. So I designed the logo so we can. Uh, we can show people that this is our music, this is real music, this is what music is supposed to be, it's authentic, it doesn't seem fake, it doesn't seem watered down, it's how we feel, this is our life, it's kind of like what our ancestors would have did out in the uh, wilderness with shofars and tambourines and whatever they had making music. Uh, so uh, definitely, definitely looking forward to working with a lot new, uh, a lot more new artists uh, in the set apart. Uh, World. Uh, this is my home when it comes to music. I don't do anything else outside of uh, set apart music. So, uh, yeah, th this is going to be my footprint when it comes to music now. Uh, other than that, uh, t shirt designs, I'm utilizing my skill set that y'all yeah, blessed me with to do that. Uh, like t shirt I have on right now, uh, like crossing off all the fireworks and fireworks and uh, telling everybody that we hear. Israelites, we're not none of these other names that the rest of the nations have called us. Uh, and that's on Redbubble. Uh, Redbubble.com. Uh, you type in IH, you type in uh, ND 1982. That's uh, E N D I I 1982. Or if you just look at the bottom of the screen right here, it should be there. And that's the link to go straight there. And all the money that we make. For these t-shirts, I donated directly to uh, our, our, our cause, our purpose uh, for uh, the IH, uh, Feed My People uh, organization, helping to feed our people, not just physically, and but spiritually as well. Uh, other than that, man, it, it, it's just a constant, constant uh, progression. Uh, I want to be able to do more uh, filming the different uh, organization uh, events. Uh, Y'all willing one day uh, get the skill set to start editing um, the website, uh, and I'm just I'm I'm just blessed right now. I mean, I could sit here for another 20, 30 minutes talking about how much Y'all didn't change my life and how difficult it is to talk to people about this truth that don't really want to give an ear to hear it. But it's always the people that you talk to that you just see that light bulb like just pop off just like that. And it's like, that's the feeling that keeps you going to that next person. Like, you never know that it might have been somebody who waited their whole life to hear this truth and you sparked that conversation with them and you didn't change that person's life. So I encourage anybody in this walk to fellowship. I encourage anybody in this walk to give their testimony. I mean, if you don't feel comfortable giving video testimonies like I do, just talking to other people, just telling your story because it inspires people. It lets people know that they're not dealing with the same issues by themselves. Like, dealing with 
the flesh, dealing with lust, dealing with alcohol, dealing with profanity, dealing with temptation, stealing, smoking, whatever your your stumbling block is, we all go through it. And the fellowship aspect of this walk is a very important one, uh, and I definitely encourage people to do it more often. And uh, I also encourage people to just don't. I would say don't prejudge people based on what they look like when it comes to talking this truth to people. Because I've done that myself. I've been guilty of uh, looking at people with my own man and praying. I don't want to hear this truth. And that'll be the main person that, that'll ask you why you wearing tassels. And then, man, that's the conversation right there, like going right into the truth. So, uh, man, I just want to say hallelujah. I mean, it's just, there's so many other things that I'm working on right now when it comes to this truth that, I mean, if I forgot about it, uh, hey, y'all, y'all know my heart. I mean, y'all know where my heart is right now. It's, it's with this truth. And uh, like I said, I, I hope that I get the chance to fellowship with a lot more of you all. A lot more Ox and Occulties out there that don't know the Ox and Occulties. The uh, there's a lot of people out there that I can't wait to meet in person. There's a lot of strangers out there that need this truth. And, uh, and there's a lot of things that I want to do to perfect myself so at the end of the day the whole purpose of this walk is for us to go out to the nations speak this truth and show them according to scripture this is how we're supposed to be living that's our job as Hebrew Israelites it's not making us better than anybody else because being a Hebrew Israelite by blood just means that we have a responsibility to Yah because we got a covenant with coming with us so we made a contractual agreement to do the things he asks us to do uh, and we have laws that, that, that guide us to do that and we also have consequences for not following those laws so being a Hebrew Israelite is not a hateful thing we don't go out there bashing nobody we don't go out there cursing we don't go out there uh, hating we don't go out there spreading racism because that's not what scripture tells us uh, scripture tells us that a man of Yah is a mirror image of what the Messiah was. And if you read scripture, you know the Messiah was none of those things of being angry, being uh, racist, or anything like that. So our job is to spread this truth. And Yah willing at the end of the day, uh, when it's time to, 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 to enter the kingdom. And uh, I mean, that's, that, that, that's pretty much it. Uh, I hope I wasn't too long, fam. Uh, I know it's probably some things I probably wanted to say that I probably forgot. But hey, I mean, this is an open forum. We can put as many testimonies on here if we, as we want. So I just want to say hallelujah, uh, toda ya. I appreciate whoever is watching this video right now uh, for listening. And hopefully it encourages you to, to look a little bit further into this truth. And really, really, really figure out what our culture is and what we have as a people. And uh, definitely, definitely, uh, if you do have a video and you want to upload it, hey, contact me, uh, yas2 at gmail.com. I'll edit the video for you, upload it. But uh, yeah, it's, it's definitely a blessing to see the, the testimonies I have seen, talk to people that I have talked to and to do this testimony so with that being said fam just want to say uh i'm out uh hopefully i get to talk to each and every one of y'all hopefully i get a chance to fellowship with each and every one of y'all i want to say uh shalom shalom and y'all bless fam